I ran marketing departments in corporate America for 10 years and then ran a digital agency for over another 10 years. So I know the roadmap to online success and that formula always includes producing content to share your message from your marketing message to sales and delivery. Hi, I'm Jennifer Neal and you're listening to The Content Toolbox. I believe the secret to finding and creating raving fans online is through you. In building relationships through stories that share who you really are, create genuine, crazy, raving fans that keep begging you to take their money. And on this podcast, we'll be talking strategies, tactics, tips, and more with myself and other industry experts. So buckle up and start your engines, cause it's go time. All right, welcome back, you guys, to another episode of the Content Toolbox. Today's guest expert is the amazing Miss Sue Koch, who is a social media success catalyst. So you guys are going to have an amazing time with her. Welcome to the show, Sue. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. All right, so... Um, Full confession here, I am totally using some of our podcast episodes to get to know some people just like everybody else. So, Sue, tell me what a social media success catalyst does and how you help people and kind of how you got there. Yes, excellent. So what I do is I help business owners set up strategies and successful procedures and structures and frameworks so that they can tackle social media with great knowledge, but reducing the overwhelm and digital anxiety that often comes with it as a small business owner. So, you know, especially in today's world where a lot of people are scaling back in their business, possibly losing jobs, shifting to new ways of doing things. Um, A great passion of mine became first around eliminating all of the overwhelm and anxiety that people have in putting themselves out there and then helping them to establish a structure to do that in a way that they can tackle that while still continuing to grow their business in these toughest of times. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome and so needed. Yes. (laughs) I know, like... (laughs) I, uh, this is not about us, but like, I do work with so many clients and they're like, I want to do all the content and I want to be on like all the things all at once. And then they're like, wow, so overwhelming. They just don't. Right. So (laughs) yeah. So how did you get to this movement? Yeah. Well, so it's interesting because this time, and I think why I'm so passionate around helping the people that are experiencing this, you know, potential loss of business or jobs and anxiety in the world right now is because many years ago, when I decided to leave my successful SVP position to start my own business, I did not plan on the economy tanking. So that was not the best plan in 2009. So I really, I feel like I, I came from all of those feelings that a lot of people are experiencing today because I left my job to start my own thing. I had all these grand plans and I thought I've done just about everything you could do in the world of corporate and management consulting and tech startup. I can do this. Well, I left with, you know, an investment for myself, but with the economy crash, I literally lost everything and I had zero, like zilch. And so I struggled with trying to go back to that world. And every time I would have an interview and get a job offer, I would feel sick to my stomach. (laughs) It's like, this doesn't make sense. I have this opportunity to go back to this comfort zone, but I did not want that. I wanted to make my business happen. And so I started using Twitter and LinkedIn very actively to just share content and build relationships with people. And at that time, too, there there wasn't even really the visual media component. Um, so it was like text and links, um, but it worked. And so I was doing actually more like business coaching and um, e-commerce and all the kinds of things from my past life, but building my clientele with Twitter and LinkedIn. But people started coming to me and saying, I don't want what your website says you do. I want you to show me to do what you're doing to get clients. I was like, hmm, Hmm. this is interesting. And so I just, I started that process with a few people who started requesting it. And then I realized what Ignited was um, the combination of the tech geek 
um, the creative and the trainer teacher in me. And I just was like this, okay, this fork in the road and I'm tossing my business plan in the toilet and this is fun. And so started down that path. And then I think because of my tech background, um, every time something changed and everyone was like, oh, now where's that? And now I have to do this. I was up till 4 a.m. like, cool, how does this work? So um, then I could tell people like, it's all right, I'll figure it. I got gotcha. you. I'll help you figure yeah. it out tomorrow. <laughs> oh my gosh. We were like total kindred spirits. I uh, love other nerds. Yeah, total tech. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. Yes. <laughs> okay. So you mentioned Twitter and LinkedIn. Are those still the platforms that you focus on or have you expanded to yeah. other platforms? I have cast a wider net. Um, <laughs> so, but I do, I have, I did decide I need to remain in a certain focus. So I do focus on, uh, very heavily on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. um, a lot on Facebook and Instagram as a team and YouTube and Twitter, but I've kind of stepped further away from Twitter. And as many people probably resonate with my love for Facebook is, is, you know, a little, it's a roller coaster of emotions. Right. Um, And really also getting much more involved in YouTube and helping clients leverage YouTube much more actively but from a perspective of kind of going back to the whole thing of establishing a a strategy, a structure and simplification is highlighting like the hub and spoke model of content and like, okay, if you want to do video and you have a larger piece of content that we can create video with that lives on YouTube and now here are the ways we can structure that to break off bits to yeah. tackle those other social media channels without feeling like you have to do a gazillion things in order to accomplish that task. So, and that's also helped me sort of step a little bit more into a zone that I love and away from a lot of sort of the frustrations of like Facebook advertising and things like that. Right. Yeah, totally. That's a whole other, <laughs> for another show. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, I have so many questions. I'm trying to figure out where to start. Um, okay. So when you're actually, first of all, how do you work with clients? Is it done for you? Do you have done with you do it yourself or like all? Yeah. So I love teaching people to fish. Um, so I started sort of doing the do for you. I did a lot of that. And I think that's where a lot of my experience in best practice and making it work for you and knowing the ins and outs and everything came from, but I really got to a point where I was like, I miss humans. Um, which, well, look at us now, but, (laughs) but I really got more into, you know, I was ignited, as I said, from the start with the training opportunities. And I loved that. And I was missing that by doing the hands-on. And so that's, as I got more experience as well, that's when I started just focusing on the strategy and the training, doing a lot of speaking um, and analysis work. So I could still tap into that kind of geeky part of me. So Mm -hmm. my process now is really more, I work with people to create a strategy, train them and their team, um, or help them develop a team to do the implementation and then stick with them for an ongoing, whether it's monthly or quarterly, to do the data analysis, to reinform strategy or continue with the process of something changed again, help us figure it out. You know, So that's the fun part of them coming back to meet them with new ways of adapting to the changes and also learning from the analytics to help them, again, keep simplifying and doing more of what works. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. And I love like music to my ears hearing you talk about analytics. Cause yeah, yeah. totally like that's how you get better is by watching yeah. the numbers. <laughs> okay. So when you are, um, like teaching people how to fish and you're mm-hmm. first approaching the strategy, can you walk through some of those high level steps that lead people to that simplification and audience exposure? Yeah, yeah. Well, so and what I find and, you know, a lot of small business owners, when I start off asking them, do you even have like a high level business strategy or marketing strategy or even a social media strategy? And everyone's kind of like, no, no, and no, you know, and they feel bad. But, uh, you know, this is a few years old, but uh, only a few years ago, there was like some crazy statistic that like 67% of even Fortune 5000 companies did not have 
a digital strategy and that they were just kind of shooting from the hip, hiring junior staff members to say, get stuff out there and leave me alone. Right. And so when I share that with the small business owner, I'm like, don't feel bad. Right. (laughs) If they can't do it, don't feel bad that you running a small law firm or real estate office or what have you has not done that. So, but then it, the conversation is around, okay, a lot of small to mid-sized business owners don't do that because they say, I don't have the time to step away from my business long enough to create it. But then when I remind them that if you know what your goals are and what you expect out of social media to accomplish those business goals, and you know exactly who you're talking to and what pain points you serve and how you can get that message across to those people, and in a way that is on brand and continues to sit with people and trigger emotion and establish you as an expert, that may take you several hours to take out of your day or week or days. But down the road, I promise you it's going to save you at least five hours a week, if not more, in that, as well as just the energy it takes when someone's like, oh, I haven't posted in three days. What am I going to do? Here's a picture of my breakfast. You know, that's not helping your business. So it not only helps to create a structure from which you can do the thing in a very easy, simple way. So you can go back to the fun part, which is engaging with people, but also to take that energy and the anxiety of all the time feeling like, uh, did I do something? You know, and that is, that is almost worse than the time suck is because that energy drain from our mindset and our emotions gets in the way of all the other things we are doing to run our business. So Mm -hmm. that usually triggers a good light with people to say, okay, you're right. I need a strategy. (laughs) I need to map this out. And then you have a structure from which to work. Just like planning your day. You know, when you have a plan, it becomes so much easier. You get better at it and it can actually be fun. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Thousand percent agree. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, I can see like we're to, we're going to, we're going to have more conversations around. Yeah. That. Awesome. So more excited. Zooms to come. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so between like, how do you help people kind of identify the platforms that they should be targeting and then the type of content that goes on those, those platforms? Great question. Um, and You know, I I feel like I'm a little bit different here because there are a lot of social media people that all say you have to be everywhere. And if you're not everywhere, don't bother. Right. And that just adds to that overwhelm factor. Like, great. If you want to be everywhere. Great. But if you're struggling to find even five minutes to accept your LinkedIn connection requests, let's start smaller. Right. Let's get the little fish and then we'll tackle the big fish. So, you know, one thing is it definitely depends on the business. I do focus a lot on regulated professional services, um, but I work with people in all areas as well, fitness and coaches and speakers. But in the regulated services area, the obvious go-to might be LinkedIn, right? And that definitely is the case for a lot of people. But I I find a lot of people, especially, you know, younger people in finance and lending and real estate that Instagram is an extraordinary place to be. So I also really look at it from sort of a coaching perspective of not, well, if you're a lawyer, you must do LinkedIn. You know, well, if someone's like, I'm a lawyer and I want to do TikTok because I saw that dancing guy get a million views, you know, <laughs> I was like, what, what do you like? What will you create? Right. Are you good at writing? Do you like writing? Do you like taking pictures? Do you like going live on video or taking recorded video? What do you enjoy doing? And so for me, it really starts with, What medium does that person prefer? Because that's what they're actually going to do, right? If there is a financial advisor who has a huge following on Facebook, and then I'm like, well, you should be on LinkedIn, go do it. They might not go do it, right? So start from where you're strong, start from where your people are, and start from a place of that thing that you actually enjoy doing so that you make it happen. And then if you're like, okay, I'm great on video, I'm just going to do short clips of video on Instagram. Well, then if we have a strategy where you have a theme in place, hey, look, by the end of the week, we've got a series of blogs that we can now write and put on your website and then put out on Twitter. You know, so it becomes that, again, that hub and spoke model of start with something that you can then pull together or pull pieces out of to then tackle the other channels. So all kind of starting from their comfort zone and their genius zone. Yeah. 
Oh, amazing. <laughs> yes, I totally agree completely. Um, you guys see, I just want to say like everything I've been preaching, see Sue, an expert, she's backing it all up. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I'm tempted to ask you about, well, okay. One of the big questions that I always get is like, okay, how do I know what to talk about? Is that <laughs> Very, very popular question. And it's, you know, and it's so interesting because it just shows that everyone, no matter their level of expert, everyone has that fear of judgment, um, fear of what do I say? I don't know how to write this, right? And I've worked with people that the first time they've done a post, we literally sat down together and I was like, I'm not, I'm not writing this for you. I'm not. Like I'll coach you through it, but it's like, you know, someone starts to to type the, the stuff that we all see, right? Check out my blog. No, nope. I'm so honored to, no, nope. <laughs> you know, like, okay, if I was your friend sitting across the table from you, how would you say this, right? Have that conversation. But the other thing is that people don't know what to say about sort of that day-to-day stuff because they discount their own expertise. Um, but again, in the world that I work in, they hear themselves say the same things over and over and over again. So they don't value it as much. Yeah. Um, so I like to remind people like, okay, you might've talked to 400 first time home buyers today about their options to not have to put 20% down, but those are just the people you talk to on the phone, right? If you talk about that topic and it's going on a video that you're going to put on social media and potentially put some ad dollars behind or then put in your newsletter, now you're possibly reaching thousands of people who never heard this advice before. Um, And then you tack on a personal story about how you helped someone overcome something they never expected. It's like, start with your basic knowledge because the basic knowledge that you have to somebody else is like mind-blowing, right? And it's just helping guide. So yeah, I always tell people to keep a list, whether it's on your computer or on a notebook or on your phone, like every time a client asks you a question, that that's a topic, that's a post, that's a blog, that's a video. So, and then people get used to realizing all of the many areas of expertise that they have that they, they can talk about. And again, right. you might be tired of hearing yourself say the thing, but all of the thousands of people out there in the world who haven't done the thing yet, they need to learn about the thing. <laughs> yep. Totally true. I love that. Like, um... I, for anybody who's in the ClickFunnels world, like Russell Brunson, he's like, do you, I, I have no idea how many times I've even told the potato gun story, but yeah. like, it's a story, right? I mean, and we've all heard it and I still listen to it. Exactly. Same thing with like Catherine, right? I mean, I, we're both in Catherine's program. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same, same thing. Like it's, yeah. it's the same story. Yeah. And when you get good at the storytelling, we want to keep hearing it. And each time you hear it, you resonate with something different. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Right, isn't that so funny the way we do that? And- I love that. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like watching a, a complex movie and you want to see it again because you're like, I know I missed something really cool. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So I want to I want to kind of like dive in here a little bit because I know like when people hear, at least from my experience, when people hear like social channels and mm-hmm. social marketing and stuff, like they immediately go straight to like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, right? Yeah. But you've talked a lot about LinkedIn and I know specifically for, especially B2B businesses, Mm -hmm. uh, but probably even some B2C applications Oh yeah, that it's like, that's a great, so can you share a little bit of kind of your LinkedIn strategy of how you help get the message out there? Yeah. So it's interesting because I've been using it for so long in this way, but what I'm finding is that there are, because like you said, people immediately think like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, that there's a lot of people who still really think LinkedIn is a job search tool. And it is so not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, but it's not just that, right? Um, And I can definitely say that I, it's interesting. I love, I, I love all the channels. Um, But as far as getting true leads and people that I will pick up the phone with or get on a Zoom, that happens much more quickly for me on LinkedIn. Mm. And it may be just that, um, you know, the algorithm works a little bit differently. There's similarities, but you still feel like you're going to see a lot more 
personal profiles because people are interacting as their personal profiles on LinkedIn. And the algorithm, of course, works based on signals just like all of them. But I feel like you see a lot more of what's relevant than on an Instagram feed or on a uh, Facebook feed. Mm -hmm. But it really is about sharing your your best content in the same way you would on another channel. You know, I was focused on to the rule of thirds. You're sort of, you know, the educate, entertain, engage, or, you know, promoting versus personalization and all of that kind of stuff. But it is another channel through which you can build your business, create strategic partnerships, joint ventures, and get, re get referrals and leads. And it's really getting out of that mindset of like, well, I'm not looking for a job, so I don't need to be there. Well, it can work just like you think Facebook is supposed to. Like everything, everything people want and expect out of a Facebook page, your LinkedIn profile can do probably 10 times better and more effectively. Mm -hmm. It's just shifting it's that cheaper. mindset. And it's, oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can advertise from your company page, but if you just interact as your profile, as most people do, you're right. going to get so much more out of it and so much more visibility on your content. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's really taking that same content strategy and, and doing it there, but according to that audience and best practice. And, you know, if there's anyone who's struggling with a Facebook page and hasn't tackled LinkedIn yet, I'd love to see them like take what you're doing, do it there. Of course, spruce up your profile if you haven't in a while. And I'm sure they'll see, you'll see more results than you have on Facebook in a long time. Oh, okay. There you go, guys. Challenge. <laughs> Gauntlet thrown. <laughs> do it. <laughs> That is awesome. Okay. So let me summarize here. Um, so develop a very clear and simple strategy for your content. So you know where you're going, who you're talking to and like what you're going to say, yeah. then you are sharing valuable information and building relationships. Yes. Yeah. It's not that hard. It's right. Yeah. Because what's scary is people think I'm doing all the first things you said and then I'm selling and pitching. But no, it's sharing valuable information and building relationships and the mm -hmm. other will will come. Oh, yeah. So, so true. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, Sue, if people want to find out more information about you or how they can get involved and have you help them, where do we send everybody? Excellent. Well, you can always find me at sukach.com, um, but I am I am doing a daily show on this topic, which features sort of regulated industry professionals successfully implementing the hub and spoke content framework. So if you follow me on my, on Facebook, on YouTube, or LinkedIn, um, I'm going live there each day to demonstrate that. And then I'm putting all of those episodes into the socialmediavault.com. So you can catch up oh. on if you want to see the lawyer or the lender or the realtor and who else, who knows who else may come down the road. Um, I'm breaking those down uh, in socialmediavault.com. So can find your, your model there. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And going live every day. That is amazing. Well, guess who got me on that? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I think we probably can attest that one to uh, Miss Catherine. I'm going to guess. <laughs> Actually through Catherine, Miss McCall Jones. <gasps> oh, that's totally true. Yes. McCall. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I know that like doing that actually, since you just mentioned that, have you, what kind of, how long have you been doing that? And like, what kind of a change have you seen that yeah. transpire in your business? It is interesting. So, um, I've actually been doing it on my personal Facebook account on my YouTube channel and, um, through LinkedIn, which really, I don't know how that happened because I was not live streaming consistently yet. And LinkedIn says they look for you to be doing episodic content before they approve you. And the stars just aligned because I got the approval and I was like, Oh, Okay. So now I'm doing it in all of those. And it is really interesting. And I think maybe part of it is the, because it's a lot of regulated professionals that I'm not getting a ton of engagement on them, um, but I'm getting a lot of side messages, um, wow. like people popping up in my direct messages. I'm seeing all of these people in those professions, um, coming to my profile on LinkedIn and connecting with me on LinkedIn. So I'm getting a lot of comments like, oh, I'm seeing what you're doing. I, but I, they're more like lurkers, I think. But it's only yeah. been, I'm on um, week two and a half. 
So wow. it's just start, it's just starting. So I'm excited based on that kind of visibility that I'm already experiencing and inquiry and interest, what will happen when I've done it for a month or six or more, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is so yeah. impressive. Congratulations. Two and a half weeks. That's impressive. Thank you. For sure. <laughs> and it's hard to do something every day. Well, and that's why the goal is like, find something that is um, can really move and impact people, but that's easy for you to talk about, right? So it's a great model in that it, it, you don't want it to be like you're doing a presentation every day, um, right. but it's fun. Yeah, right. it's fun and it's short and insightful and something that people can model and replicate. And then if they would like me to help them do it, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so awesome. Okay. And are you actually, just for my own personal curiosity, are yeah. you actually you personally doing it live every day or you're using like a restream service for stuff you've already pre-recorded? Yeah. So I actually have been going live every day. There was, um, I did a couple planned because I was traveling. Yep. Um, and so I knew I wasn't going to be on, you know, around my laptop at the time. So I did record two of them and put them up. And that was also good practice to see how that worked. Yep. Um, but yeah, it is fun to just be there and do it. Uh, but if you need to, having that recording option is really nice. Yeah. Did you notice much of a difference between the live and the pre-recorded engagement? Yeah. Oh, as in term, no, no. And also it was like, I think when I, um, when I did that, it was only like day five and day six. Okay. So it was still early. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was kind of funny because I feel like on the one that I recorded and went live, I had more comments and I was, I was around, but not at my laptop. So I was like, hi, you know, <laughs> this is kind yeah. of cool because now I'm not going live, but I can talk to people. Oh, so that's yeah, neat. I don't think I've done it long enough to really notice. Like, I think I'm doing it at a weird time of day two. I don't know if I might move it or just see if, you know, if I get the views later when it's a replay, that's fine too. So oh, yeah. we'll see how it goes. Yeah. 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 Oh, what a fun experiment and congratulations. Yeah. That's a lot Thank to take you. on. <laughs> All right. So sukach.com and the social, social media, media vault.com. Vault I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. And I am going to sweet talk Sue into sharing something with us in our content toolbox resource area. So um, make sure that you go grab that, go check out Sue's site and get engaged in all the stuff, like follow what she's doing. You can totally social media hacker. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks so much, Sue. I appreciate you being on the show. So fun. Thanks so much, Jen. All right. Take care, you guys.